what I'm going to share with you today, I've entitled Foundations of Faith. Turn to your neighbor and say, Foundations of Faith. I want to speak into this idea about what does it really mean to build our homes, to build our families, to build our lives on foundations of faith. I think that we all understand the concept that the foundations of a thing are very important. Am I right? You know, whether that be the foundations of a building or the foundation, the foundational principles in education, whatever foundations, we know that if something goes wrong at a foundational level, then the rest of the structure is gonna be compromised. Weak foundations are gonna mean a weak structure. Am I right? Let me tell you a story about foundations. It involves a certain man who will remain nameless, but he sleeps in my bed. (laughs) So that might give you a clue, but I just need to protect his dignity. Um, It was his job a long time ago to uh, construct the cot that Jensen slept in as a baby. Uh, We didn't have a lot of money back in the day and we were very happy to receive a second-hand cot from a, a family member and in being transferred from one house to the other, it had to be disassembled and then reassembled at our house. And I thought to myself, that's a man's job. I'm (laughs) going I'm going to leave it to the man of the house. Uh, When it was done, I had a quick look at his work. It looked pretty, if that's important. All the women, yes. Uh, It looked rectangular. Then I didn't think much more of it until one day, Jensen was about four months. He hadn't been sleeping in his cot very long. You know, he goes from a bassinet to, to a cot. And he was swaddled in his blankie down for his afternoon nap. When we heard the most almighty bang and, and we raced in to see that the bottom had actually dropped out of the cot, <laughs> like on an angle, like that. And there was tiny little Jensen <laughs> screaming his head off, sandwiched between the mattress and the wall. He sort of tumbled down. Now, fortunately, there was no permanent damage to our son. I can't say the same for his ego. <laughs> <laughs> All that to say, strong foundations matter. Am I right? Strong foundations matter. When we think about childhood, we understand childhood to be a highly foundational time in a person's life. In, in childhood, foundations are laid and an in, a, a person's entire adult existence is going to rest upon those foundations because we're all products, are we not, of where we came from and how we were raised. And that can either be a blessing or a challenge depending on what went on foundationally. Now, it's not to say that God can't heal and restore foundations, amen? If they're broken, if they're not ideal, he can heal, he does heal, and we need him to do so, amen? Because there's no such thing as a perfect childhood. There's no such thing as a perfect foundation. But it still doesn't negate the truth of the significance of family in the establishment of foundations in a person's life, right? When our little ones come into the world, their brains are so plastic. (laughs) They're literally being formed and fashioned in every conceivable way. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all these types of ways. And this has massive implications for us as parents because we carry a God-given responsibility to steward these little lives. We carry God-given responsibility as best as we can to lay the foundations that will be for them strong and support them to be the man or the woman of God that he is calling them to be, right? We want to set them up to win at life, do we not? We want to set them up to win in family, win in relationships, win in the kingdom. And it's a big responsibility. And the truth is, for us who are parents, it can be terrifying. (laughs) A few nervous giggles. Terrifying. How many parents out there have just fallen to your knees at one point or another and gone, dear God, help me not to stuff them up? (laughs) I don't, <laughs> thank you, Gary, for your honesty. You and me, mate. Please, God, don't, help, don't let me stuff my kids up. It's frightening. 
When you know how important raising the next generation is, but you don't feel like you know where to start. When you know how important it is, but you don't feel like you have what it takes, or you feel like perhaps you're still trying to restore your own broken foundations. There's still work going on in you, leave alone having to get it right for them. So what do we do? I want to put it to you today, this Mother's Day, that the most important thing that we can do in our families and in our homes for our children is lay a foundation of faith. The most important thing, greater than foundations of education, greater than foundations of material stability, greater than foundations of parenting style or global exposure or experiences or any other thing, lay a foundation of faith in the Lord. Faith in him. Other things are good and they have degrees of importance, absolutely no doubt. But nothing will establish our children and prepare them for the life that they are called to live like a deep foundational consciousness of God. When I say that word faith, lay a foundation of faith, it perhaps conjures up different things in the minds of different people. Maybe you straight away think about actions associated with faith, like coming to church, church attendance, or Christian education, or these sorts of things, and you're like, that's how I'll lay a foundation of faith. Or maybe when I say that word faith, you immediately think about having a capacity to believe God for signs and wonders and miracles. And that is how I will lay a foundation of faith. And, And no doubt those things are a part of it, but it's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about laying a foundation of faith. I'm actually talking about building our families And giving our children a deep understanding of the existence of God. Like his daily reality, his daily presence in our lives. Helping them to not just know about him, but to truly, really, deeply know him. This is why, because firstly and foremostly, our faith is not an action to perform. It's not something to believe in, believe for. Our faith, firstly and foremostly, is someone to believe in. You understand? Someone to believe in. We believe in God. The actions of faith, the outcomes of faith, they come from faith in Him. They're born out of relationship with Him. Amen? It's not behavior. It's not religion. It is relationship. Relationship with the living God. A verse regarding faith that we love to quote all the time comes from Hebrews 11. And it says, the preacher says, with veins popping, without faith it is impossible to please God. Who's heard that? If you're in a Pentecostal church, you've absolutely heard that. (laughs) But the scripture doesn't actually put a full stop there. If you read that verse in Hebrews 11 verse 6, it says this. It says, and without faith... It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. Everyone say, he exists. He exists exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The faith that pleases God is the faith that remembers him and regards him in everything. That faith that defaults to him and defers to him and believes that in every single situation, God is there. Amen? So when I say lay a foundation of faith in your family, faith for your kids, what I mean is the best thing we can do for them is establish this consciousness, this awareness that God is there all the time, every moment. He is. He's not just a construct. He's not just a worldview, not an ideology, not a get out of jail free card, not any of those things, but real, present, interested, good, and holy. Amen. He is who he reveals himself to be in scripture, a loving father. 
a good and righteous shepherd, the rock upon which we can stand. Amen? That kind of faith is going to put God first in families. That kind of faith is going to seek him in all things. That kind of faith is going to expect God to move. Of course we expect the healing because we know the healer. Of course we expect provision because we know our loving Father is a need meeting God. Amen? When we live every day in front of our families like actual believers, authentic lovers of God, it becomes in them a firm and an immovable foundation. The problem is, though, faith like that wavers, does it not? Faith like that isn't actually perfected in any of us. To live every single moment with that deep awareness and consciousness of God, mindful of him, it is not set and forget. We, we can toggle in and out of that faith place in different seasons, in different moments of our lives. And when faith is low... I want to put it to you that there is other forces out there that will happily move in and settle and fill the void in our families. You know, when we're not laying a foundation of faith, we're sure to be laying some other kind of foundation. If the priorities and the vision and the communication and the decision making in our families are not anchored in faith, then what are they anchored in? They're sure to be anchored in something. What is it? If it's not faith, then maybe it's fear. Fear is invasive. Fear is pervasive. Fear comes with all its cousins like fretting and frantic and anxiety and worry and control and maybe even manipulation. Fear will happily fill the void when faith is low. If it's not faith, then actually maybe it's feelings. So when we feel up, things go up. But if we feel down, things go down. And if we feel frustrated, then maybe things blow up. You know, our feelings will happily fill the void when faith is low. Am I right? And this is not to bring guilt or condemnation on anyone, because let's be honest, we have all been there. Of course we're afraid. Raising the next generation is scary. Of course we're subject to feelings because nothing can get into your heart, right? Nothing gets into your heart like family. But in all that, I want to say God is calling us upward. Establish foundations of faith. Faith in him. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. You can't change that. But from here on in, build faith. Build faith. Build faith. Build faith. Build it into your own life. Build it into your family. Build it into your marriage. Build it into your kids. Faith that's going to lift you above fear. Lift you above fear feelings and become for our kids and families a firm foundation from which they can grow and flourish. Amen? When you determine to lay a foundation of faith in your family, when God and his presence, his reality, his existence just becomes your default, you're actually going to enter into the strength and the blessing that he's so eager to release. And I've got a few ideas around that. I want to say, firstly, faith is going to give you a higher view. Turn to your neighbor and say, faith gives you a higher view. A higher view. Faith is going to grant you an ability to see your family and your situation through a different lens. It takes you from an earthly and temporal perspective on life all the way to a heavenly one. It's a different lens. It's a different view. The Bible tells us that as Christians, we're to walk by faith and not by sight. But who knows? It's easier said than done. And when faith is low, all you're really left with is what your eyes can see. And sometimes what our eyes see in families is far from ideal. When we see the toddler tantruming, When we see the teens being rebellious, when we see situations that we can't actually control, 
when we see the grind of life and, and see how exhausting that is, when we see relationships being strained and all these sorts of things, if all we've got is all we see, sometimes that can be depressing. Am I the only unholy one in Nations Church today? Sometimes that can suck all the joy out of life when all you've got is all you see. And if all we've got is all we see, we're, de we're destined to have unstable foundations. We're destined to go up and down because life goes up and down, right? But faith is going to elevate us to a different perspective. Faith wants to take you to a higher view where you actually get the privilege of seeing the situation through the lens of God and not just your own. Where you get to rest on the constant of God rather than the up and down of life circumstances. Amen? There was many, many moments. There's many moments still. You know, in my journey of raising a disabled son, anyone who doesn't know, I have a 17-year-old with a genetic syndrome. There's many moments in that journey when accessing faith was so hard because what I could see looked so bad. The grief that I felt ran so deep. Faith in moments seemed so hard to grasp. God, are you there? God, are you in this? How can you possibly be in this? And often it was just the little things that would trigger big moments in me, big reactions in me, like a one moment in December 2015, and as I was only nine years old, and it was the last week of school, and all the school mums out there, who's the school mum out there? All the school mums out there know that in the last week of school, your children come home with their backpacks stuffed to the brim of all the stuff that they've accumulated and, you know, manufactured throughout the year and they come home with the little remnants of stationery that you bought for them back in January. Who knows what I'm talking about? That's what happened. You face palm, right? Because you don't know what you're going to do with all of this stuff. You look at the clutter in your house just before Christmas and you're like, Aah! anyway, that's a different story. But I remember this moment, 2015, Isaiah's nine, and I remember unpacking his bag and I pulled this out. It's a bunch of pencils. Here they were exactly as they were when I delivered them in January. There's a whole year's worth of pencils untouched. All the pencils that he should have used, but he didn't. That he should have done daily writing with. That he should have been learning spelling words with. But he didn't because he can't write. And he wasn't learning. And I just stood in my kitchen and I wept. I'm holding in my hand this symbol what I could see in my hand, this symbol of every single thing that was wrong and everything that was so broken. I want to tell you the grief of that moment wanted to keep me stuck. The grief of that moment wanted to hold me down, wanted to keep me in helpless, keep me in hopeless. But by the grace of God, faith gave me a higher view. It's always been faith that has given me a higher view. Amen. In the days following that moment, I just ran to God. I ran to him and he reminded me of his power. And he reminded me of how he is working all things together for good. He reminded me that the end of my story in him eternally is glory, is victory, is wholeness, is freedom. He reminded me that he's the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, there's nothing and no one else in your life that can say, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your husband isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's got less hair. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, my feelings aren't the same yesterday, today, and forever. Anyone's emotions the same? Actually, women don't know about your husband. <laughs> 
You know, there's nothing and no one else that can say they're the same yesterday, today, and forever, but God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Only Him and our lives and our families and our children are safe when we put ourselves in the hands of an almighty God, unfailing God. You don't have to be a slave to what you see. You don't have to be a slave to what you feel, amen? Faith can give you a higher view, a view of God, and it is a safe place for our families, amen? Another thought, faith unlocks a greater resource. Everyone say a greater resource. A greater resource. When faith is low, the only resource that you have access to is your own. Your own insights, your own intelligence, your own capacity to make ends meet, make things happen, know the answers and so on and so forth. And that is when, when we're relying on self, that's when we try and control. We try and uh, manipulate things and twist and hustle. And that's so often when fear sets in. And of course we're afraid because there's something deep down inside of us that knows I don't have enough. In our subconscious, we know I can't fix it, I can't control it, I can't change it, but nonetheless, we still try. We were actually never designed to rely on our own resource, amen? We were designed to run to God. We're designed to run to our Father. When we run to Him in faith, it's then that we learn He is a never-ending resource, amen? Like, what do you need today, mom, dad, person? What do you need? God has it. Grace, comfort, enabling, strength, joy, peace. What is it? Power, insight, wisdom, understanding. What is it? Because it's all found in him. He is a never-ending supply to those who look to him in faith. Amen? I remember how terrified I was to enroll little Jensen into school for the very first time. He was our adored little four-year-old boy, and I felt like I was throwing him to the wolves. Who's in that phase right now? (laughs) It's scary. And we'd resolved for a number of reasons that private education, Christian education were not really options for us. Uh, It was financial reasons. It was logistic, you know, proximity, all those sorts of things. We just couldn't do it. So that actually left us with two state schools as options for us to choose from. And I tell you, I was going out of my mind with fear. It was awful. And based on nothing, but I'll say probably my own prejudice, I had decided that one of the schools that were in my options was the worst. I hadn't prayed, I hadn't talked to the Lord about it, but I had made up my mind there was no way we were sending our son there. So I got to work. I was hustling hard to make this other school happen. I rang the school multiple times, surely made myself annoying. I'm basically begging for them to enroll my son. I even drove by the school and named it and claimed it in Jesus' name. This is a confession session, a cathartic confession of, of my bad motherhood moments. Um, but the more I tried in my own strength, I tell you, the more that door slammed shut. The only door that was open to us for enrollment for our son Jensen was the one I did not want to walk through. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce that at that point, faith finally kicked in. And, and I yielded at that point. I fell to my knees and I was just like, God, would you choose the right school for our son. Like I put Jensen, I put his schooling, Lord, into your hands. Not my will, but yours be done. You know what I don't know. You see what I don't see. You have this insight, so I choose to yield to you, Lord. And in faith, I walked through that only door that was open to us, even though I did not want to. But I walked through with great trust in my heart, knowing that wholeheartedly, I had put this into the hands of the Lord. And you know, the testimony of that time was that school ended up being the biggest blessing to our family. Jensen was in that school all the way from kindergarten to the end of his primary and he loved it. In that state school, we had Christian friends, we had Christian teachers, and not only did it become a perfect place for Jensen, but it also became a perfect place for Isaiah. 
Because what I didn't know at that time is they were a school known for inclusion. They were forerunners in disability education and they welcomed Isaiah with the most open arms and nurtured him and loved him in unbelievable ways from kindy all the way through to year four. Give God some glory. The point is, we don't know, but God knows. Our resource is limited, but the resource of the Lord is unlimited. Unlimited in your life, where your insights, mom, where your insights, dad, fall short, the Lord has all the insight that you need. That's why we have to build faith into our decision making have to build faith into our priorities and directions because it's there that we get to access the full resource of heaven, amen? And my last thought today, faith's going to give you a higher view. Faith's going to unlock a greater resource and faith is going to impact the next generation, amen? When you build the foundations of faith into your household, When you constantly default and defer to the Lord, that faith, I promise you, is going to imprint onto the next generation. Proverbs 22 and verse 6, it's Mother's Day. It'd be wrong not not to quote it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not. Everyone say, will not. He will not depart from it. This is a wisdom principle. It is straight from the word of God. The foundations that we lay, they matter so much. Don't get discouraged if what you've done or what you're doing doesn't seem to be achieving anything, doesn't seem to be working because the thing about foundations, you can't see them. The thing about foundations, they're under the ground. They're under the surface. And oftentimes, we don't really know what's going on in the hearts of our children. Am I right? But trust me, your kids see. Your kids know. They might not let you know they're watching, but I promise you, they are watching. (laughs) You might not see God moving, but I promise you, he is moving. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. He's always working. Amen? I remember Jensen as a, as a 14, 15-year-old boy. Let's just say it was not our best time. <laughs> Anyone got teenagers? Don't put your hand up, especially if they're in the room. It was not our best time. <laughs> we had moments of conflict, moments of friction. We had moments, yes, we're a normal family. We had moments where we clashed if you're a fly on our wall. Wow. You know, we had moments where there's some blow-ups with our son and moments of his rebellion and moments where he gave us no indication really that he was drawn towards the things of God or the purposes of God. But this is a birthday card that he wrote to me right from the middle of that season. I don't know if you can see that. It's actually not a birthday card. It says, with deepest sympathy. It's, <laughs> it's a bereavement card. <laughs> is that not peak teenage boy right there? Let me read your next excerpt from this card. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mum. My deepest sympathies go out to you being my mother. <laughs> this, you can't make this up. Even when we butt heads and I'm stubborn, you're so gracious to me. You always lead me back to the word and back to God, even when I resist. Yeah, right? That was very precious for me to receive at that time in our lives, amen. I was far from perfect in those years, made mistakes, no doubt, we all do. Perfection is not the goal here, amen. But one thing I did do was keep on in faith, and even when I didn't realize, Jensen was being impacted. Something was being deposited in him, and glory to God for the young man that he is today. You know, despite what our eyes might see, our faith is impacting our children and our children's children. Amen. So I want to say to you today, whoever you are, biological parent or even just spiritual parent, even just mentor, even just coach, whoever you are, lay a foundation of faith. 
build the foundations of faith. Build them wide, build them deep, build them high. Build them when you don't feel like it as well as when you do. Build them in season and build them out of season, amen? Because when you're praying, they're watching. And when you're responding in faith, they're actually learning. And when you're rising up above fear, rising up above feelings, you're actually showing them what it is to be a man or a woman of God that lives with the Lord in not just religion, but relationship. Amen. And you actually are building, laying the foundations upon which the next generation can stand strong. We pray that what walks in us will run in them, amen? We pray that they will be a generation that goes further and faster, amen? Amen, foundations of faith.